what's grown, what's gone, what's continuing to hang on, and what's been replanted that's coming on. Don't ask me to say that again, because I just made that up, guys. Good morning guys, welcome back to Papa's Place. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, we're doing another garden update. I'm just wanting to show y'all what's what I got going on out here and what's been going on and what I've been doing and give you just an overall updated garden. First we're gonna look at this here, honey delight. Now guys. If you ain't ever planted this tomato, I encourage each and every one of you to plant this. You get, I got these seeds from Burpee, and they don't get much bigger than that. But you can see we right here at August, and y'all know what the temperatures has been in the south. It's been in the three digits, it's been hot. But look at the tomato. Loaded with yellow ones right now this morning. Daddy got more put on up top, and way up top is more blooms. Now, if this make three years that I've had this tomato, and guys, the last two years I've kept it all year long and had tomatoes all year long. This and the tropical sunset has been the best tasting tomato I've had this year, as far as taste wise. Yeah, they small. But I eat a BLT about once a week right now. And even though I still have some red tomatoes, bigger tomatoes, I take these and cut them up because they're the best tasting tomatoes. And that's one plant you're looking at there, that big. One plant. So I encourage you to give that right there a try. I might eat me one for breakfast this morning. Right here, guys, is the heatless habanero. Man, are they loaded. They just keep putting on, keep growing. Blooms just keep popping out. More peppers than I know what to do with. Now, I will say this year, and I think it has something to do with how hot it's getting. That's about as big as they get before they turn red. Now, last year, they was getting a lot bigger than that. They was getting about that long, a little bit bigger around. So I blame that on the heat that they get in red faster than they got time to grow. But look how pretty the greenery is. Doing good. Guys, it's the same thing with the Savannah sweet peppers here. Look at them, how loaded they are. And if y'all been keeping up with my videos, y'all know down at the bottom, that's how what they've looked every time and as i harvest them coming up they keep growing keep blooming keep putting on more peppers now these are getting tall enough and we ain't eating all these peppers they basically getting thrown away i'm finna come in here and i'm gonna top them off this is what i've done for the last two years i top them off they'll start putting new growth on and they'll keep making peppers Well, something that's new that's been planted in the garden, this little bed right here, I got some garlic. My neighbor down the road, I don't know what it was, but she pulled up a whole bunch of her garlic bulbs and had them in a bucket and gave me some, so I planted them. Gonna see if they'll come up. Now, I know as hot as it is and dry as it is, I have to come out here and moisture in that soil every morning and every evening. Sometimes it probably needs it in the middle of the day. Now, they've been planted now for about four days, and I ain't seen nothing coming up five days, maybe, but it's going to take a little longer than that anyway, but we're going to keep an eye on the garlic and see if it pops up, planting garlic bulbs in the middle of the summer. Black Beauty eggplants. You can see the growth. New blooms up top, but guys, they ain't making as many eggplants, but as you can see down in here, there's one right here. This is about as big as they get when it's this hot. You, you can't hardly let them stay on there to get any bigger size than that because they'll start drying up. You want to get them when it's hot, this kind of temperature when they're smaller like that. That's just right. 
And like I said, if you try to leave them on there until they get bigger in this heat, they'll dry up on you and fall off. But I got about four hanging down there in these pickings on that side. There's a couple more over here, but here's, here's an example right here. Even though you're watering this stuff in this heat, that nary done fell off at that size. There's one out right here, it ain't got but one over there on the far side. It's got some new blooms coming out of here on the top. But like I said, during this heat, they putting on good growth, <laughs> but they ain't making the blooms they was. Which it, this far into the year, that's still good for two people that live here, full time two people. We still get more eggplants than we want to keep eating fresh eggplants. Now down here, y'all remember I had two zucchinis. Well, one of the old vine borers finally took that one out. If I remember right, I think I said on the last garden update that I thought that one wasn't gonna last much longer that it had a vine borer. And this one here, it's got one good bloom on it and another bloom coming. But I think a vine borer's in it too, guys. Probably next garden update, you won't see that. See how that looks? Right there's a vine borer, right there. I just actually took a close look this morning and seen that one. So by the next garden update, y'all won't see that plant. It'll be gone. I'm gonna leave it and see if I can get, at least get one more zucchini. Cause it's got a one good bloom and one baby zucchini right there. We might get one more off of it before it kills over. Same thing with the white egg plants, the little fairy tales. Actually right now, the little fairy tales over here we getting the most eggplants off of. But these, these are fairy tales, they're the little small ones. But it's still producing as good as it's done all year. The white eggplant here is done just like the Black Beauty, putting on a lot of growth, but it ain't hardly putting on no blooms as hard as it is. Right, matter of fact, all I see is that one right now coming on. Oh, here's another one down here. So I got two eggplants on this right now. There's one bloom right here. But the heat has really slowed them down, but the plants is still looking good for the hot as it's been. Now I finally pulled up my summer dance cucumbers over there. And guys, I can't remember if I made a short video clip on it that day or not. If I did, the sun's in my eyes reading, I'm squinching. If I did, I pop that little short clip within here. But my big cucumber that I was growing, saving for seed, and I was saying I was going to see if it would get as long as the one last year. Well, it didn't get as long as the one last year. Right off the top of my head, I can't remember the exact measurement, but I got it wrote down and I'll put it in the screen. But what I did, I come in here and I planted some seed that I had. And if I remember right, this is a uh, Diva Cucumbers. But you can see that didn't four of them come up. But on that side over there is some more summer dance cucumbers. I actually didn't have no more seeds, so I ordered me some more seeds. And I, every one of them's come up over there, so we're gonna have us some another another deal of cucumbers here. Well, these are gonna be my later ones. I got some more right over here that we're gonna take a look at. Now, guys, I ain't gonna go over every tomato like I've been doing, cause I think the majority of you watching this is my regular viewers. But y'all can see the tomatoes is still putting on growth. Every one of my plants that I save, I still got my second growth of tomatoes on there, which is ain't as many as the first growth, and they ain't as big of tomatoes, but they're still putting on tomatoes. A lot of them, they still putting on more little blooms up top. 
but with the heat, sometimes them blooms fell off. Matter of fact, that in there, when I just touched it, it fell off. But so far, every one of them is doing good. And of course, the one down there on the end. But of course, the one down here on the end, the tropical sunset, which is my other favorite as far as taste-wise. Guys, it just keeps making tomatoes and blooms, 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 blooms. But they all have surprised me at the growth they put on with just me watering them because we ain't had no rain. We ain't been getting no rain. It's dry, dry, dry. But you can see them up putting on good sized tomatoes. Every one of them. But I'm running into an issue. Matter of fact, here's one right here. And when my tomatoes start getting ripe, I come out here to pick them. And they got little holes in them. Now that right there looks like a bird been pecking on it. And there's some of them old brown, I call brown sparlings out here. And in some of mine the other day, you can see little teeth marks. And if I got a picture, I'll save it and put it on there. And I'm pretty sure it's a squirrel coming out here and chewing on my tomatoes when they get right. And the reason I think it's a squirrel because my feeder's over at my chicken feeder where I store my corn. The squirrel done chewed the hole in that plastic top again. And I done had to repair them tops. This will make the second time this year. Even though I got corn hanging on the tree over there for them squirrels to eat, they starting to get on my nerves. So I may have to have some squirrel and gravy to go along with that fresh venison. I'm going to have to get, I guess, because we're going to take a look at our okra again. <laughs> but yeah, these big tomatoes here, every time they start getting right, for the last couple of weeks, I come out here and a lot of them got holes in them like that. Now, I know some of you watching this wanting to keep up with what's happening on my trellis here where I said I'm going to run the tomatoes down and as they grow, they'll hang down. Well, I ain't been keeping up on my job, but what I need to do, you see how high these has done come up. That in there's got blooms on top of it. This is the brandy wine. Got blooms on both of these. I got to bend it over and start tying it clipping it making it run down that line but you can see I still got good tomatoes matter of fact these need picked today because like I told y'all before on these heirloom tomatoes yes a tomato does taste better when it's left on the vine to get real ripe but an heirloom tomato if you leave it on this vine till it gets real ripe it's gonna be so cracked open I go on and pick mine right now when they're about like that, when you set them up there on the table in a couple of days, they're going to ripen on up. But you can see so far, my little line here, this is the one I started running and it just keeps growing, so it's going to keep running. The only thing I'm going to do, see I really don't need this tomato right here so that in there can keep running. Since I like the brandy wine so much, I may still end up pulling this one out after I get these three tomatoes right. I may pull this one here out and let that brandy wine have more room. Cause this is kind of an experimental for me this year anyway. So that's the update on that. So far it's working out good. Now I've kept these tomatoes going already way longer than i expected yes they do have blight but the new growth it's like they put on new growth and the blight's kind of staying staying the same distance from the new growth so it ain't just too terribly just eat up with blight this one right here i don't know if y'all can see it right here to y'all's left i'll spin y'all around this one right here has the worst blight And guys, while we on these tomatoes, I was going to talk to some of you, especially if you knew it, gardening and stuff. 
about the leaf curl. Some people see that leaf curl and they go to freaking out thinking they ain't gonna have no tomatoes and such like that. You take this year as hot as it got, as quick as it got, these tomatoes, the leaves actually look better right now than they did when I first got the first crop off of them. When it gets that hot in this sun, as hot as it is, them, them leaves is going to curl up. That don't mean you got no disease or nothing wrong with your tomato. Now, yes, leaf curl, there is a leaf curl that has to do with diseases, but most of the time, if it is, it's going to be a, it a curl under, not up and over. If it's up and over like that, all that is is the natural instinct of that plant of curling over trying to shade its own self. So just cause you got leaf curl on your tomatoes, don't go panicking thinking it ain't gonna make no tomatoes cause you see what these is done all year. Now down here on this end, I planted me some more yellow squash. And you can see it's coming on and beautiful. That way we can have some yellow squash a little later on through the year. Fool your jalapenos right here. They've slowed down, but you can still see. You can see we ain't even been picking them. Gonna quit picking them. But the same thing with these guys this year. Right now they're getting brown on it. With this heat and stuff, they ain't growing as large as they did the last two years. But it's hotter this year earlier. I've been trying to let them get to about that size right there before we pick them, but that's still a good size enough. You can take them and, well, you can do whatever you want. My wife likes taking them and cutting them and whatever she stuffs them with. They good cheese and stuff. But look at them, they still got blooms, putting on new blooms. So they'll be making all summer long. Now, if you... Now, if you remember back a few weeks ago, I started some seeds. I actually started sugar baby watermelons, some more gold on gold, some cucumbers, and some cantaloupes. Well, after I got to thinking about what I did, <laughs> which all my plants on the gold on gold didn't come up anyway, and all my plants on my cantaloupe didn't come up. But it, even after they come up, I changed my mind and I pulled them up because I said I need to re-amend some beds and get ready for my fall stuff. So, but I kept these as cucumbers, I mean watermelons, I'm sorry. The ones over here is cucumbers we're going to look at. But this is the sugar baby watermelons and look how pretty they are, guys. Look at the bloom. I've got five watermelons on here right now, that size. There's three up in the bed. One right there and one hanging around the back side just like that. Them are, them are some pretty plants. Right here in the dead dog heat of the summer. Yeah, and I think it has something to do with the up here close to where I'm taking better care of them water-wise and the shade cloth. But these plants look so much better right here in the dead heat of the summer than my spring watermelon plants ever look like. And now they, you know they out there on the outside. And guys, look how beautiful these cucumbers are we got coming on here. Just loaded down with blooms. They ought to start making some little cucumbers any day now. There's some right there starting. Now, if I remember right, I went through my seeds and I didn't have none of my summer dance when I planted these. And I think these are some of the something I got from Burpity called Burpy hybrid burpless or something like that that I still had in my seed box but look how beautiful they are like I said they look they look so much better than my cucumbers did during my spring right here in the like I said the, the dead dog heat so we're gonna be having cucumbers again here and some more coming on over there them two beautiful round beds right there, cucumbers and watermelons. 
Now guys, then we're just gonna take a walk see through here. Them beds, y'all see, I ain't got nothing in them. That's where the cucumbers were in that one. The Ashley cucumbers. I done took them out, and I don't know if y'all seen my video where I got some more gin trash. So I've been reworking my beds. Pulled all them old strawberries up. Tired of fighting with them. I'm gonna rework my beds and start over. Just giving y'all a look -see. We'll go down to the other end and come back so the sun won't be shining. So y'all see, I ain't got nothing else growing out here, but well, we still got some yellow squash. Two of these over here to Fine borders ain't got yet. And it's still been giving us enough squash just to eat us a little thing of squash about once a week fresh, which is all I want. So I ain't got to rework that bed until I pull them up. My sweet potatoes. Oh yeah, I forgot. We're gonna take a look at the okra out there that the deer keep eating up, but I planted me some more okra inside the fenced in area. It's coming up well. That's crimson spineless. There's my little long red slim cayenne peppers. Guys, I put the whole bunch of them the other day and dehydrated them, ground them up in the pepper flakes and powder and look at the blooms on that thing hundreds and hundreds of blooms y'all remember i had two of these plants i pulled that nothing up i'm like I don't, I don't even need the one much less two oh, look at the growth of my blueberry plants this is my blueberry plants that's the premier and this one is the tilf blue well i got Two quarts. What I did is they were getting ripe. I'd pick them, put them in a Ziploc bag till they all got ripe. Well, I made me some blueberry jam a couple days ago, and I think I ended up with six half pints. It was just enough blueberries for the recipe that's in the sheer gel box, which is what I use. And I ended up with six half pints of blueberries. Now these tomatoes back here, this Kellogg's breakfast here is just like, it's just dying on me. And it actually didn't look like that until I come back here and give it a good deep watering a couple of days ago. I guess it done got dry so long, maybe the water killed it. But I've been wanting to pull these up anyway. This here's a big zack, but you can see it's no different blooms i might just let it go as long as it's pretty but guys y'all see the difference in the back here these that's in the shade more the leaves are a lot prettier they ain't curled up i mean they curled a little bit but they ain't curled nothing like the leaves on my other tomatoes back here in this shade now the more you go down here into this shade See, I ain't even been out here. These tomatoes done got right, but they ain't getting no size on them. That there look like it's dying, too. That's the Cherokee. And this here's the brandy wine. Now, this brandy wine back here never did make many tomatoes back here in this shade. Because it don't get but a, I don't know an hour and a half at the most direct sunlight's all it gets. So it never did make many tomatoes and you can see the tomatoes that's on it now ain't gonna get very big before they get right. So my experiment so far is telling me the tomato plant needs more than an hour and a half of sun for sure. But yet, you could grow something off of them in the shade. Cause the further I went down this fence, you kind of like this one right here, got two and a half to three and a half hours. And then these got back to where they got all the evening sun, which I got a lot of tomatoes off of them in the first crop. 
Over here on the outside of the fence is these little raspberry shortcakes that I had in pots. And guys, they were struggling. Between me trying to water them, they was going from too dry to too wet. Me watering them, trying to keep them alive. So after my zucchinis here, I said, well, I'm finna plant these raspberry shortcake plants right out here and see if I can get them back to life, get them going. If I do, that'll be their permanent place. But things work when it's hot like this. These little small containers and tubs ain't the way to go when it's so hot. Now these big raised beds with that wood all down in the bottom of them, yeah, you can keep things growing in them. Let's take a quick look at the muscadines, guys. These first two right here is the noble. And I know I've said it every time I show y'all, but look how loaded they are. And some of them is starting to get turned purple. So it won't be long. I'll be making some more muscadine jelly. But what's funny to me, that's a noble. And this is a noble. Planted the same time. They get the same treatment. I don't know if y'all watched my video on it, but I feed them starting in March. First of March, they get triple 13, about a quarter of a cup. On the 15th of March, they get about a quarter of a cup of calcium nitrate. And every plant gets the same thing. I do that on March, April, May, June, and July. This year, July was too hot, so they didn't get none in July. But the first two years, they got it in July, because this will be my third year since I planted these. But they get the same treatment, same food, same watering. And this one right here ain't got no muscadines on it at all. And this one right down here is the cohort. It ain't got no muscadines this year. This one right here is a cohort. Don't have no muscadines on it this year. You can see carrots, all that, pulled all that up. Of course, I ain't gonna pull my sparks up. I just keep watering it, keep establishing my bed. But back to the muscadines coming down here, this is the Southland. It's got a few muscadines on it. Not many. I'm talking about bear view, like one little cluster, two little clusters under there. Got some little ones coming on right there. Now this is a south land. Now all the vines ain't loaded, but it's got several clusters on it. Cause these vines here is behind them muttons. This would be basically their first year to produce. You can see it's got several muscadines. And this right here is the Icing Plus. And there's pretty loaded. But now this plant down here is the Icing Plus, and it ain't got, he's got just four or five berries down here at the bottom. But guys, this, this plant right here, the year I planted it wasn't but about that tall. I don't even know why they sent it to me. I would have, they done got down to, that's all they had, but anyway, it looks like it's gonna come on. So what I was gonna say, is I'm gonna give these, cause I got four different varieties to try. And I ain't gonna make no decision this year, I'll probably let them do it go again next year. But if for some reason the code, just say example, the cohorts just say they don't do that good. And the nobles is really doing good. I might take this one cohort out so I can let these vines on this noble run on down and have a further, a further run. Like I said, that'll be after next year. You can't make a decision like that too soon because these next year might put on muscadines for the noble don't. 
It may be these plants, just cause they shipped them the same time and I'm planting them the same time. They may be six months younger than them other ones are a year younger. Now guys, I know some of you have been wondering about this. Well, she come back and made me a visit and I got her on camera. I'm gonna try to put a, some pictures that it was off the camera. I got a camera hanging right over there on that tree. And when I attach these pictures, I want y'all, if y'all can see the times on them pictures of how quick she cleaned that row. She come back and she cleaned it that night. I'm talking about again, every okra, everything. But she ain't been back in a, several nights now, cause you can see down at the bottom, they putting on new growth. So what I was thinking about doing is coming out here and nubbing them off right here. Cause I got other ones coming over there and just letting them go and see. You don't never know. She may have done got run over, shot in somebody's deep freeze around here. I may never see her again. Ain't gonna hurt my feelings unless I seen her on my plate. <laughs> but y'all can see it's putting on new growth down there. watermelons I still got some watermelons that ain't ripe I'm bad about coming out here and picking three or four of them and even though the little twisty tails done dried up on them usually I end up with one that ain't ripe I pulled all of the cantaloupes up because they done done what they was doing wasn't blooming no more then over here, I cleaned this up and put me some of my gin trash and blended that up. Plus, you can see where I took a shovel down through there after I blended it with my tractor tiller. That's where I get my dirt that I mix in my beds. Cause guys, you don't want just compost or just that bag box stuff in your beds. It dries out way too quick, too hard to keep water. Mix you some good soil in it so that soil will hold your water. I know y'all said soil, it's all soil, I understand, but that dirt's got a little more clay factor in it and it'll hold you some soil. So you want to get it to where it'll hold you, hold you some water, I mean. And in case you didn't see my video on my gin trash where I stowed the old boy's dump truck while he was down on the beach with his toes in the sand, playing with his pretty little girlfriend. Well, I stole his dump truck that day and I went and got me three loads of that good aged compost. And guys, there's something I didn't say in that video if you knew and you don't know about gin trash. If you do get gin trash, let me get this camera around here so I can say this where y'all see me. Okay guys, like I was saying, there was something I didn't say that I was wanting to say and forgot to say when I was doing the video on this gin trash. If you do get gin trash for your gardens and your plants, you need to make sure you getting gin trash that's been piled up out there and composted for several years. If you go down there and you get fresh gin trash that was done this year or last winter, and you got it and it ain't freshly com or it's fresh and not long composted, you running a risk. So the risk is, is the chemicals that they spray on the cotton. It's kind of like these chemicals they spray on the 
he feels I don't know the names of it, but I'm just using an example. It works the same way. They spray it on these hay fields, and then the, when they cut the hay, you use that hay and put it around your plants. It's still in that hay. It's also still in the cow manure. The cow manure, the cow eat the hay, and it passes through the cow, and it's still in the cow manure if that ain't been aged for years. Now, y'all seen me a couple years ago using cow manure. Well, I thought that's what happened to me, but I knew where I got it from. The 90% of it had been under that barn for many years. Same thing with gin trash. If you get gin trash, you want to make sure it comes out of a pile that's been sitting there for years because that chemical that they spray on that cotton can still be in that gin trash if it ain't been there years enough and composted down enough. The second thing is the pH on this, which you need to check your pH. I don't care if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or the garden center or wherever you buy your bag soil. They can say what they want to. You need to test your pH on that. And the reason I say pH, not MPK, because MPK, I don't care about because I'm going to be adding, feeding my own plants. I'm going to be steady, I steady add rabbit veneer to mine, so the MPK is going to be there. But far as the pH, you never know what the pH is. You don't know if that soil's real acidy or real high pH alkaline. I know I said that word right, but y'all get it. High pH or low pH. Low's on the acid side. This, when I got it, this, I don't know, this has been tricky to me. A lot of this, I can come out here and I can get some and test it and it'll show us high, high pH. Then I can come and I can get another sample and I can sample it and do it. And it'll show it's kind of right there real good. And then it's like every now and then you can get one that, a sample and it'll show you it's on the acid side. <laughs> so I don't know. If something else got pushed up in this pile at, at this area we got this or what but the pH seems to be bouncing around on my samples I'm getting so now what I'm going to do is sample all of my beds and guys pH test I just use baking soda or vinegar and I, I ain't got nothing that makes it dead on the numbers I just look at it and if it's bubbling real high on the vinegar when you put vinegar in it or if it's bubbling real high when I put baking soda in it or if you both of them just kind of barely fizzing I know it's kind of getting closer to the middle of the pH I'm wanting around a 6.5 but it's kind of a look at it and go from there I ain't one of these about taking soil and getting it tested but I have to do every bed to see what I'm gonna need to do to get them back right. Cause this has kind of been bouncing around. But my main point is I wanted to make about gin trash. A good aged gin trash is very good to mix with your soil. No, you don't need to plant straight into that stuff. You need to mix it with your soil. And make sure it is aged because it does, they do put chemicals on the cotton. And of course the cotton gin just blows out the gin trash out there and it composts it down. So I wanted to make sure I made that clear because I forgot to put that in the video of me still in the truck and going to get me three loads of gin trash. But y'all can see I ought to be set on some compost here for quite a while because I got my rabbits and my quails and chickens and I can keep putting that in the pile and as I rake these leaves up in the fall just keep mixing that, so I ought to be set for quite a while, don't you think? <laughs> Guys, while we walking back out here, that's my Annie apple tree right here. Dude didn't make no apple this year. But that tree grown, that's only the second year for it. Well, this may be the third year. And this apple tree right here, I have to put in a screen. My wife asked me the other evening out here, and I couldn't no more think of the name of it. But I look it up because I got it noted down. But it ain't growing as big as the any apple tree. But my 
but my pear tree, guys, I'm kind of heartbroken. At least I think I am at this time. And I know I'm gonna say this wrong, but this is supposed to be a Cliff Cliffner Clifford. I'll put that in the screen. Pear tree, the yellow pears. Well, this is the first year it's made pears. I'm gonna get y'all up here close. But there, guys, I don't think that's gonna be. I don't. I don't think that's what this tree was. I think it was mistagged. This here looks more like them little green pears to me. Cause some of them done started falling off. And here they are, the ones, some of them that fell off that been on the ground for a while. And I've cut them open and they just taste like just the old, plain old green pear, I call it. I know there's a hundred different varieties out there. But I was wanting a yellow pear, the one that get bigger. And that's what the, what the tag had on it and what a research said ought to grow good around here. And I'm afraid that ain't what I got. I'm afraid that right there had the wrong tag on it. And that upsets me because a pear tree done been here three years. That ain't something you can just pull up and start over. It ain't something you can just plant again this year. Next year, you'll be right back to the same point. So yes, that's, I think once this COVID come out and all the employee issues working and people, I've got a lot of seeds that I know ain't what's supposed to be in the pack. And I think that's what happened on this tree. I think our quality of service out there went way down after the COVID come out in 2020. And I understand a lot of the reasonings behind it because of course everything shut down stressful can't get it and then you can't get workers in they can't work because they got it and a lot of them just saying they got it because they didn't want to work and all that baloney but anyway yeah our service that's a good thing to leave in the comments y'all think our service went down our quality of service overall on everything since the covid come out tell me what y'all think down there in the comments Well, guys in the house there i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna make a little clip and show you some seeds i got started and tell you real quick what they are i got some seeds already coming on from a fall planting and i'm gonna insert that right in and guys i know that light's shining on there but there's my new seed starts i got some green magic broccoli amazing cauliflower katarina cabbage Swiss chard, red Russian kale, uh, hasty Brussels sprouts, and some prism kale. And down here I'm trying to start some celery. And I see one popped up. I ain't never been able to start celery seeds. To tell you the truth, I don't know if I had bad celery seeds, so I bought some more. But for that one right there to be as tall as it is, it ought to be several when well, I see nothing popping out. So maybe they're going to start this time. Like I said, I know y'all can't see very well. But I tried the method of just using perlite when I put my seeds in the soil and just covered them with perlite. That seems to be working out well other than I don't like the way to her light turns green and stuff from being wet, but I don't know. I give it a try this time. Thank you guys for dropping in today. And as always, feel free to drop in anytime. Ask any kind of questions you would like in the comments, and I will get back to you. And if you ain't never subscribed to my channel, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Don't cost you a thing, but it does help me grow my YouTube channel. And if you like these videos or you got anybody, friends and loved ones that trying to start up in the gardening and like watching Papaw's Place, you think they'll like watching Papaw's Place, share my videos with them. That's actually the best way you can help me grow my channel by sharing it with other people. 
But as always, guys, I hope y'all have a great day, a great week. God bless. See y'all next time.